Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh Shai, Basham, Makakadash. Double honors to the Apostle Elders, Great Milsom, that rule well. Peace and blessings to elect to Israel. Shalom and above all. Back at it when listen to the spirit of power, Yahweh, Basham, Shai, Lord willing, the video is edifying. Yahweh, we name Heavenly Father, meaning He is, He exists, He to be. Ba in ha the sham name Yahweh Shai, the name of the begotten Son, meaning He delivered, He saves, or Chakradash Holy Spirit. Okay, so I just wanted to do this lesson through the Spirit on, um, you know, basically <clears throat> each day that we are above ground, so to speak, in this present world, you know, we have to earn our stripes every day. Okay, every day has its own problems <clears throat> every day has its own circumstances and situations or even triumphs you know but each day we have to earn our stripes man okay you know we have to be proven we have to be battle tested man every day is its own battle you know so we got to stay on point in the spirit of diligence man you know we have to stay diligently on point in this faith man we have to be devout servants of the Abash Mashiach and keep discipline you know, because just as easy as it is for the Lord to give us this truth, it's just as easy as he can take it away. And this truth is a privilege. So we have to show the Lord each day that we appreciate this gift that he's bestowed upon us. The scriptures say, neglect not the gift that is in thee. All right. Call up Okay, I believe that's First Timothy, uh, the fourth chapter. Okay, but this is Matthew 6 and 25. Therefore, I say unto you. Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? <clears throat> Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? You see? So Yahweh told us, you know, don't worry about your life. Okay, don't worry about, you know, your daily necessities, you know, because the birds, they don't have a nine to five, you know, but how about still feeds them. He still provides a place for them to raise their young, you know, so the Lord can provide for us too. He could feed us too. He could clothe us too. Okay, so we can't be, get, we can't get caught up in all that. We have to trust in the Lord. Okay. It says, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? Right. So, Yahweh Shai is saying, you know, which of you can add a cubit to your stature, meaning grow your height with spiritual power, you know, with faith? And Yahweh Shai said, if you can't do that, which is least, you know, then why are you worried about uh, food pretty much in another, in another verse, okay, in one of the Gospels? All right. So... If you think about it, to have spiritual power to add a cubit to your stature to make yourself taller, you know, that that's 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 mighty, man. But Yahweh Shai said that's least when it comes to spiritual power. So he said, how much more food? You know, so the Lord is going to take care of us, man. The Lord will ha have uh, mercy upon his elect, man. He's going to give. The Lord giveth to all flesh, ultimately. You know, as the scriptures say. So how much more to those who are serving him, you know? So it says, and why take ye thought for raiment? So why are you worried about clothes? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if, you, if the Most High so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall not much he, shall not he, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? That's right. So if you have Hashem Shai, you know, makes the plants bud and grow and be beautified okay it's the same way how he can make us bud and grow okay and be beautified you see but we have to have faith in that okay because if you don't have faith you're not going to be defended Sirach or ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 13 verse 31 therefore take no thought saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed right because people are always worried about oh what am i going to do what am i going to eat what am i going to wear you know where am I going to stay? But that's where faith comes in. And especially in these times now, Jacob's trouble, we're going to be living like pilgrims. 
You know, we're gonna really know what it's like to live like a pilgrim in Jacob's Trouble, because we're gonna be wandering to and fro <clears throat> and dwelling wherever we can, okay? You know, that's like what happened with King David. You know, when he was fleeing Saul, he had to dwell in a cave at certain times. He had to dwell in, in certain lands, you know, that he was foreign to, you know? So it's, it's, it's gonna be like that in these times now. Well, Yahweh Shemeshah is gonna be with us just like how he was with King David, you know, because you know, Yahweh Shemeshah rises out, we be of the house of David. Yahweh shall ultimately be in the chief cornerstone, which is Solomon in the reincarnation, which inherited David's throne, okay? If you can receive it. So it says, and this is Yahweh Shai, Solomon in reincarnation talking. Like he said, a greater than Solomon is here. See? In uh, Matthew 6. Or Saki, he said, uh, he said uh, Solomon was not arrayed like one of these. Okay, because King Solomon, he was decked out. But what did he ask for? He asked for wisdom. That's what he sought after. You know, and that's what we have to seek after as well. We have to earn our stripes with the wisdom of Yahweh Shemashai day in and day out. See? This is uh, Matthew 6, starting at verse 32. It says, For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of these things, of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of Yahweh Shemashai, and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you right so that's our priorities our priority is seeking the kingdom first you know the scripture say delight yourself in the lord he'll give you the desires of your heart if you seek the kingdom of Yahweh Shai first and his righteousness everything that you you know your, your righteous desires will be added unto you man okay that's why the lord said how he added unto solomon you know wisdom and riches and you know so on and so forth man okay solomon had abundance you know, but he ultimately asked for wisdom. So that's what we have to seek first. We have to seek the kingdom first, man. You know, the scripture say at his right hand are pleasures evermore. So Yahweh Shemashai has so many beautiful things that he is going to give to his elect, you know, who are following him after the ways of righteousness. But you have to follow the protocol, just like how Yahweh Shai followed the protocol. And we have to do in like manner. Read that again, Matthew 6 and 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of Yahweh Shemashai and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient unto the day that unto the day is the evil thereof. Right. So we can't be worried about tomorrow. We have to worry about today. Now, of course, you know, you can plan ahead. All right, but you have to understand that, Lord willing, I make it to those plans. Because just like that, at the drop of a dime, Yahweh Shemashai can change your life, man. Okay, and so when you understand that, you have to move with the fear of the Lord because at any moment the Lord could take you. But the beautiful thing is, if you're of the elect and you do, you know, give up the ghost, at least when you come back, you're going to have a righteous reward. And when you go to the spirit realm, your righteous works are going to follow you, man. Okay, and vice versa for the wicked, man. Okay, but nonetheless, through the spirit, either way it goes, man, we want to make sure we're on point with Yahweh Shemashai. Day in and day out, the scriptures say, how the Lord said, my people have forgotten me days without number, man. We don't want to come in that spirit forgetting the Lord days without number. We got to we gotta earn our stripes every day, man. Yahweh Shemashai is worthy to be praised every day. There's a literal council in the heavens of angels that literally worship Yahweh Shemashai 24-7, man, okay? At every moment of the day, all right? And us, you know, being the uh, terrestrial angelic forces through the spirit of power, Yahweh Shemashai, we ought to worship him every day as well. King David said it, you know, Psalms, I, I'll, pray, I'll praise these seven times a day, roughly paraphrasing, you know? All right, so it says Matthew, or actually that's that's the point right there. All right, because every day has its own problems. That's why it says the sufficient of the, the day is the evil thereof. So every day has its own challenges and issues. So we gotta overcome those, you know? And so it's James 4, starting at verse 13, go to now, ye that say today and tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appear for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, 
we shall live and do this or that. That's right. If the Lord will, man. Okay, because Yahweh Shemeshach can take our spirit at any moment. You know, the brother you want to the beloved brother you want to man. You know, that brother be saying that uh, he, 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 he recalls what the elder apostle Rakan said. You know, we go to camp, we might not make it back home. Okay, especially in these times now, the spirits are getting more active. People are getting a lot more, you know, wild and crazy and more demon infested. You know, we got to be on our P's and Q's, man. Okay. We have to resist Satan. All right. Steadfastly. But the point being what? You know, what is your life? It is even a vapor. We're here one moment and then we're gone. So we got to make sure that we're still living uprightly no matter what, to the best of our ability, that we may be uh, acceptable in the sight of Yahweh Shemesh so This is uh, Lord willing, Lord willing. Hebrews 6 and 3, and this will we do if Yahweh Shemesh permit. So that's a scripture, you know, straight to the point. You know, we're going to be able to do these things if Yahweh Shemesh permits, if he allows us, man. Here's another one, 1 Corinthians 16 and 7. For I will not see you now by the way, but I trust to tarry a while with you if the Lord permit. Okay? So if the Lord permits, man, it's a Lord willing we make it tomorrow. That's why y'all wish I said, think not on tomorrow, man. Lord willing we make it tomorrow, but shit, we got to make sure that we earn our stripes today. You know, just because you lived righteously yesterday doesn't mean that if you go off the next day, the Lord's still going to accept you. We hope he does, Lord willing, but he could still, you know, if you do something treacherous just within a day, the Lord could take the spirit from you, man. You know, so that's why it's important to move with the fear of the Lord every day, man. There's a precept I want to grab real quick through the spirit. For Ecclesiastes 18 and 27, a wise man will fear in everything, and the day of sinning he will beware of offense, but a fool will not observe time. Okay, that's what it is. A fool won't observe time. All right. Um, let me get a quick precept. This is Sirach Ecclesiastes chapter 2, starting at verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Right. So each day is a trial. Each day we're going to have to face, you know, or, or, or sometimes it's even for seasons. OK, it could be for years. It could be a week. It could be a day. It could be a minute. It could be a second. But you have to endure through all that. Right. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. Right. You don't make haste. Trust in Yahweh Shemashai. Scripture say that, you know, Yahweh Shai, he's that he's that tried cornerstone, you know. And he that, you know, pretty much uh, trust in that chief cornerstone shall not be confounded. You know, he shall not make haste. And it says, set thy heart right and constantly endure. So we got to constantly endure in this truth, man. We can't get uh, frightened in the time of trouble. We have to trust in the Lord. Cleave unto him. Sirach 25 and 12 says, faith is the beginning of cleaving unto Yahweh Shemashai. It says, and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end right so if we want to be increased or if we want to be you know magnified at the la at the latter end of our life we have to cleave unto the lord all the way to the end strive for the truth unto death just like caleb you know caleb and joshua when you think about it but i'm thinking about caleb in particular because caleb said how he wholly followed the lord you know and the lord gave him his uh his strength even unto his old age you see so the Lord increased him at his latter end, you know? Also Haggai, the book of Haggai says how the latter end of this house or this temple is gonna be greater than the than, than, than the uh, than the former, man. So the Lord's increasing us in these last days, man. Yahweh Shai said it, greater than Solomon is here, you know? We're being increased through the ministry of Yahweh Shemashah. But you have to endure to the end. He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. 
you know, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. It says, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient with our change to a low state. That's right, man. Okay? So you might get tried, you might go through certain tribulations, but you got to be patient and trust in the Lord, like, like Daniel. You know, Daniel was thrown in the lion's den, but he was patient and he trusted the Abba And guess what? The Lord took care of Daniel. He protected him from wild beasts and he fed him, man. And he delivered him from the lion's den. And, he's, and he made his enemies suffer in the same pit they tried to throw Daniel in, man. And they got eaten up by the lions. See? So it says, for, for gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. That's right. So we all got to get tried in that fire, man. All right, so we, we could be acceptable in the sight of Yahweh Shemashah. In the book of Judith, uh, chapter 8, verse 25, you know, on down, it talks about how the Lord does scourge them that come near unto him to admonish them. So if you want to draw nigh to the Lord's spirit, you're going to have to be, you're going to have to be scourged. You're going to have to go through, you know, the, the, that adversity, that correction, you know, because Yahweh Shemashah, he teaches with, uh, tough love now the lord can be tender and compassionate don't get it don't get me wrong but he'll you know if he, he he'll teach with tough love if you don't pick up the lesson you know uh, uh uh right soon you know if you harden your neck then that's the harder the judgment's gonna make like they love to say you know a hard head makes a makes a soft ass man okay pretty much someone who doesn't want to listen they're gonna have to feel it man you know but if you repent you won't feel hurt you know but of course, you know, everything's set up to the spirit. So when we do go through fire, when we do go through the judgment of the Lord, you know, we have we have to be patient and bear the indignation of the Lord because we sinned against him. Right? That's why the Apostle Paul said, No chastisement for the present time seemeth to be joyous, but rather grievous. Yet nevertheless, afterward, you know, at the latter end, right? Afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby, man. Okay, so at the end of us catching hell. We receive the rewards of that, you know, which is the spiritual gifts. Okay. So it says, uh, believe in him and he will help thee. Order thy way aright and trust in him. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy and go not aside lest he fall. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him and your rewards shall not fail. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. Look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? That's right. So, you know, that's what you got to do. When you're in situations, you think about our forefathers. Think about Yahweh Shai. Hebrews 12 and 3 tells you that, you know, when you get weird and faint in your minds, think upon what Yahweh Shai had to go through. Think about what our forefathers went through. You know, even going back to Judith, the eighth chapter, Judith mentioned Abraham. She mentioned Isaac. She mentioned Jacob. She said, how the Lord didn't try us in the fire like how he tried them. You know, so we, you might think you have it bad, but there's some of our forefathers who had it worse, but they still maintain the faith. The apostle Paul, you know, suffered shipwreck, got stoned to death, was beaten with rods, you know, suffered a day and a night and out in the sea. Okay. You know, all types of things, man. And then he said, daily came upon him the care of the churches. So on top of him having to catch all the hell, he said, on top of that, I had to take care of the church every day. You know, so if you think you got it bad, man, our forefathers had it worse, man. But guess what? They still maintain the faith, so we have no excuse. That's why the scriptures say, uh, nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of Yahweh Shemel Shai. You know, that's in Romans the eighth chapter, man. Not even death, you know? It mentions that, okay? Now it says, um, verse 11, for the Lord is full of compassion, of mercy, and long suffering and very pitiful and forgiveth sins and saveth in time of affliction. That's right, man. So you got to trust in that. Woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinner that go of two ways, right? You have Bashmash is not dealing with a lukewarm individual, a double-minded individual, someone who wants to drink the cup of devils and drink the cup of the Lord, someone who has to have one foot in the world and one foot in the truth. The Lord's not dealing with an individual like that. A person like that is going to be destroyed, okay? Going to be destroyed. So I says, woe unto the sinner that go of two ways. Woe unto him that is faint-hearted. Meaning someone who lacks faith, man. All the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Second Ezra 15th chapter tells you that. Revelation 21, 
verse 8 says the fearful and unbelieving is going to be thrown into the lake of fire, man, which is those nuclear missiles hitting America. Okay? And other places going to get hit with missiles too. All right? Like the land of Israel. But that land is going to be rebuilt back up through the spirit of power of Yahweh Shemashai. When Yahweh Shemashai sets up their righteous uh, order upon the kingdom and the planet Earth, man. All right, the Lord is going to beautify his footstool once again. The scriptures say the earth is my footstool, the heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. All right, the Lord says he's going to make the place of his, uh, he's going to make the place of his feet glorious. I'm talking about the planet earth, man. But before that comes, this place has to get destroyed, man. There's got to be, there's got to be a righteous demolition crew upon this wicked place. All right. Just like in uh, the book of Maccabees, when they were rebuilding the, 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 the temple, there was an altar there that, that was left by the heathen. So they destroyed the altar. Then they built a new altar unto the Lord, you know, because that other altar was defiled. Babylon is defiled. This place got to go. You know, like scripture says, second Ezra's how the evil is sown, but the destruction is not yet come. So the Lord is saying the destruction has to come in order for the next kingdom to come. So we're going through that narrow and straight gate, and we're gonna and we're gonna face some hard times, man. Jacob's trouble is gonna be some hard times, and but Yahweh Bashmashah is gonna be with us. Yahweh Bashmashah Ratzah, we maintain the faith, you know. So while Esau's feeling the squeeze, while his kingdom's gonna be crumbling, we're gonna have to you know maneuver amongst it, but we're not gonna get taken with the evil. Yahweh said, "I pray not that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil." So we're gonna have to go through Jacob's trouble. You know, so right now is the time to really strengthen our spirit, strengthen our faith, man. Okay. But like it says in verse 11, for the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long suffering, and very pitiful, and forgiveth and forgiveth sins and saveth in time of affliction. And that's for his elect. But this is uh Sirach Ecclesiastes 2 and 13. Woe unto him that is faint hearted, for he believeth not. Therefore shall he not be defended. That's right. So if you don't believe in Yahweh Shemashah, you're not going to be defended. You're going to be destroyed. Why don't you that have lost patience? And what will you do when the Lord shall visit you? Yeah, and a perfect scripture to precept that is a scripture where it says, The evil and the wicked servant saith in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming. Which is you got guys who come in as truth. And because Yahweh Shemashah didn't come when they wanted him to come, they wanted to go back into the world. But that's really just because they were never really down for the Lord to begin with. You know? Trying to force the hand of the Lord. Okay? Nah, you gotta endure. And that's also in the book of Judah, too. Because they were trying to force the hand of the Lord. Because they were trying to, you know, besiege him and cause a famine upon Israel. And they were like, if the Mosai doesn't deliver us in a certain amount of days, then we're gonna go unto the uh unto the uh you know Holophanes. But Judah was like, nah, you can't force the hand of the Lord. And he, regardless if the Lord delivers us in rock, you still have to maintain, you know, integrity. You know, it's the same thing now in these times, because even with Esau, you know, you might have to face death dealing with this devil, trying to avoid taking his C hip, his MOTB, Revelation 13 and 16, man. And that's the spirit. See a truck on the back that says F, uh, it says F Biden. Okay. A trailer, somebody, you know, it's dirt on the trailer. Somebody probably wrote it with a finger. But that's what? That's seditions amongst men. That's them not and, and that's them not regarding their kings nor princes. That's prophecy being fulfilled right before our eyes. That's the Egyptians versus the Egyptians, man. Babylon is crumbling right before our eyes. You know? So that's proof right there that we're going through it. You see? But the Lord is keeping us from all that, you know, turmoil, man. Now some of us might have to, you know, some of us will have to die. According to, you know, the scriptures speaking about the martyrs of Yahweh Shai. But you have a great reward if you do give up your life for the Lord, man. And you got to think about it. You'd rather die for the Lord than die for, die, than suffer as an evildoer, you know? Because if you're suffering as an evildoer, you're going to die anyways. But if you're suffering as a righteous, you know, as a Christian, then gay, you, you know, you're going to be twa. all right? But it says, um, they that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. And they that love him will keep his ways. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well pleasing unto him. And they that love him shall be filled with the law. They that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts and humble their souls in his sight, saying, We will fall into the hands of the Lord and not into the hands of men. For as majesty is, so is his mercy, man. Yeah. And that's what it is, man. 
Okay, if you if you love Yahweh Shemesh, you're gonna keep his commandments. John 14 to 15, John 14 to 21. You know, if you love the Lord, you're gonna feed his sheep. If you uh seek the Lord, you're gonna do that, which is well pleasing unto him, man. You're not you're not gonna try to piss him off, okay, because that's gonna draw you away from him. All right, and if you love him, he says you're gonna be filled with the law because love is the keeping of the commandments. Romans 13 to 10. Okay. So that's the point on that precept right there. Um, Lord willing, get this last precept. Luke chapter 12, starting at verse 16. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will put on my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I'll say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods and laid up for many years. Take thine ease, drink, take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Right? But Yahweh Bashmashai said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose things then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward Yahweh Bashmashai. That's right. So the Lord can say, you know, hey, tonight is your night where you're, where I, I'm requiring your soul. You know, the Lord could just take your life like that. So everything that you had laid up, who, who's that going to now? You know, that's why it's important to lay up good works to Yahweh Shemashai so that they could follow you in the spirit realm, man. You know, that's why King Solomon said that was vanity and vexation of spirit, Paul and Shai, how, you know, everything that you pretty much work for here on earth, you're going to have to leave to another man after you, you know, who didn't labor for it. And he said, who knows whether he be a wise man or a fool, you know? But if you labor in righteousness for Yahweh Shemashai, that's never in vain. 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. You know? And it also tells you that in Sirach the 5th chapter. Okay? You know, say not, I have enough for my life. Sirach Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. Set thy heart set thy heart upon thy goods and say not, I have enough for my life. Follow not thine own mind and thy strength to walk in the ways of thy heart. You know? And say not who shall control me from my works For the Lord will surely revenge thy pride Right There's got a lot of people who think that you know Hey what, what, what can God do to me You know I can do whatever I want You know I've been doing this God ain't judged me yet This that and the third People get proud but it says the Lord is going to surely revenge your pride People think just because the Lord didn't judge them in that specific moment That they went off That he was okay with what they did you know, the Lord said that to Esau. He said, these things hast thou done, and I kept silence, and thou thoughtest I was altogether such a one as thyself. But what? But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. So Esau thought the most I was dealing with him, because while he was doing his wickedness, you know, to his people and to the planet Earth and everything they're in, the most I wasn't saying much to him. The most I wasn't really judging Esau like that. But now the most I is about to put a foot up Esau's ass, and he's reproving Esau through these words, which is being spoken through the, 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 the elect of Yahweh Shemeshai. That's us, Yahweh Shemeshai Razzah would be a part of that number. That's us being set in order before Esau's eyes, man. And these elites, they, they peep us, man. They watch us, man. Okay? They study our movements. You know, they track us. Scriptures say how our persecutors are swifter than eagles. They hunt our steps, roughly paraphrasing. Esau's a cunning hunter. You know, he's a man of the field. All right, so we, so we, you know, these devils is watching us, man. And it says, um, verse four, say now I have sinned, and what harm have happened unto me? For the Lord is long suffering; He will in no wise let thee go. That's right. The scripture says, in no means clearing the guilty. So, Lord, He gonna get you eventually, but the Lord is long suffering; He gives you space to repent. That's really what it is. He doesn't judge you in that moment because He gives you time to repent. But if you don't repent, then he's going to destroy you, okay? Concerning propitiation, be not without fear to add sin unto sin, right? And a propitiation is a sacrifice for your sins, okay? And atonement for your sins, which Yahweh Shai, he's our ultimate propitiation, you know? But it also says in Asrach, where it says uh, propitiation is uh, fear in the Lord. Let me see if I can find that, Lord willing. Rock Ecclesiastes 35 and 3 
to depart from wickedness is a thing pleasing to the Lord and to forsake unrighteousness is a propitiation. That's right. And that's what Yahweh Shemshah requires of us. Offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. <clears throat> you know, we're not living our we're not living to the will of man anymore. We're living to the will of Yahweh Shemshah. And that requires us to walk uprightly and to follow the ways of righteousness. Now it says, and say not, his mercy is great. He will be pacified for the multitude of my sins, for mercy and wrath come from, come from him, and his indignation rests upon sinners. Yeah, because we got a lot of people who get caught up saying, oh, God is merciful. God is merciful. Yes, indeed he is. But don't forget, he judges too. Don't think the Lord won't judge you. A lot of people think the Most High is sweet. You know, the Most High is balanced, man. He's merciful. All right. And he could bless you, but he can also judge you and curse you, man. Okay. So it says, verse seven, make no tearing to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. Right. So you, each day you got to earn your stripes. You can't forget the Lord many days without number, put not off from day to day. Don't wait to turn to Yahweh Shalom Shai. It says, for suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. Right. Out of nowhere, unexpectedly, the judgment can come. All right. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance, man. Right. And the only thing that's going to be help you, going to help you in the day of vengeance is Yahweh Shemashad. Nothing else. Not even your riches. So Ecclesiastes 5 and 8. Set not thy heart upon thy goods unjustly gotten for they shall not profit thee in the day of calamity, man. Right. Proverbs 11 and 4. Riches profit not in the day of wrath. You know? But righteousness delivers from death. So, Lord will, this video is edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem El Shai, Bashem Kakadash, double honors, and to the apostles, elders, great Muslims, never well, peace, blessings, elected Israel, Shalom, and above all.